week on Storyboard, Nestle India's MD Suresh Narayanan talks about the marketing and the communication challenges faced by Maggie. Paperboard releases a new campaign. And Lufthansa is luring travellers with a new campaign this festive season. Hello and welcome to Storyboard. I'm Shibani Gharat. Nestle has been in soup over the Maggie fiasco for the past few months. Moving away from this debacle, the company recently celebrated its 100 years in India and commemorated this milestone with a multi-channel campaign. Still, great challenges lie ahead for Nestle in the future. What are these challenges and how is Nestle dealing with them? Storyboard editor Anant Rangaswamy caught up with Suresh Narayanan, MD of Nestle India. Let's take a look. Suresh, thank you for talking to us. Thank you, Anand. In the context of recent developments on Maggie, yeah. what are the major challenges in communication today? Well, the, uh, the challenges really are uh, around three areas. Uh, they are in the area of uh, clarity. Uh, they are in the area of uh, uh, ensuring comprehension. And uh, they are also in the area of consistency. So, uh, messaging uh, today, as I see it, uh, has to be very clear has to be uh, comprehensive in terms of the content and the comprehension capability of the message and also it has to be consistent over a period of time and I believe that, uh, that uh, because of the multiple uh, uh, media sources of information for the consumer not the least of them being the digital media uh, I think these aspects are becoming extremely important under the overarching banner of authenticity so whatever you say has to be authentic and has to resonate uh, with, with, uh, with the consumer, in fact, who is now dictating, uh, who is taking the dialogue uh, themselves. It is no longer marketeers who are giving the dialogue. Consumers are determining what the dialogue should be. Okay. In general, when you say all this, you know, the, the speed at which there are changes in media noise or focus yes. requires all companies to sort of react much faster, must yes. be much more nimble. Yes. And that's, a, that's something that large companies, multinational companies find it difficult to do. So, how, how would you react to that? Well, I, I, the age in which we are in, I would not say is the, uh, in, in simple terms, the digital marketing age. But it is marketing to the digitally enabled consumer. Right. And this really means uh, two or three things. Number one, it means a clear understanding of who that consumer is and what is it that motivates that consumer. Principally, what drives the consumer would be the brand, the usage, the purpose and the direction that, that, uh, that uh, the brand wishes to take and I think that is a very important aspect of how consumers relate to, uh, to, to brands. There is also, I believe, a certain degree to move away from purely look at uh, looking at metrics and looking at, uh, at matrices and looking at KPIs in a sense of, of, of looking at data to really start becoming more of a social anthropologist in terms of understanding the underlying societal changes that are determining how consumers make, uh, make brand choices. And uh, I think this needs to be done uh, in real time, which is really the whole process of listening is becoming extremely important internalizing that listening in terms of clear and simple narratives and making those narratives time and time again and evolving them as you go along. I think these have now become extremely important rather than the old uh, days when I was a, a young marketer when it was primarily dependent on quantitative matrices, testing, retesting and then establishing the platform in terms of the four P's or the five P's and moving forward. Right. I mean, when we talk about this con context of listening real time and so on and so forth, back to there is a nimbleness that is required yes. and an empowerment that is required, yes. especially in large organizations. Yes. You know, you can't wait for a problem to arise and then, uh, you know, call for a board meeting and discuss what happens. Exactly. So, what are those ch peculiar challenges that you see let uh, me, large let companies facing today. Let me, let me, for example, uh, take the example uh, that, that is now closest to my heart, uh, Brand Maggie. And what is it that we are looking at in terms of uh, the platforms of, of engagement? Firstly, as a company, as Nestle, uh, we have a digital acceleration team, as we call it. This is a team of really, uh, of people, young people, uh, who are native to digital, who 
are listening on behalf of the company to the conversations that are happening online to the issues that are emanating online and to the concerns that are coming online in terms of various aspects of the organization and responding to them in real time that's one part of the of of the process that takes place now this means that there is a lot of empowerment to this team to respond in a manner that is in conjunction with the values and with the spirit of the organization so therefore it's not me as a ceo who is going to be determining every single answer or my management team that's going to be determining every single answer it's going to be a a, a group of young people who are millennials and who are linking with other millennials and other young people uh, on social media to make that conversation secondly in terms of the whole area of consumer uh, engagement uh, as a company we've just launched what i would call uh, a 24/7 consumer engagement platform which fundamentally means that any time a consumer any time of the day or night the consumer gets into a toll free number and uh, voices his or her concern on any aspect of the brand or be it on isn't that uh, you know in a 1925 a toll free number can they catch you on uh, on twitter they can, they, can, they can catch me on on the site as well so therefore there are multiple so right. it's a number is just one part of uh, of the whole exercise you know you, you can talk to me in real time and you can get your answers i see this not as a as a service i in fact see this as a huge opportunity and i think uh, consumers today are are waiting or are not waiting for organizations to start responding but they are waiting for organizations to try and reach in manners which is uh, which is clear which is consistent and which is in synchrony with the purpose and with the role that they see the brand playing in their lives and i think i think we as marketeers are no longer on that one way tube where we send out a set of discrete messages uh, orchestrated in a manner that makes sense and hope and pray that the consumer gets it uh, today i think the the the, the par has come to a, to a situation where the consumer says this is what i think your brand stands for this is what i believe is its purpose this is what i believe uh, i should be doing with it this is relevant this is not relevant and either you have a brand that that becomes a mega brand or you have a brand that ultimately gets uh, trashed right you know one of the uh, we have a lot of obvious upsides to social media and digital yes. media yes there are also a lot of downsides yes. now both in our personal lives or companies or that's brands right. that's right so how do you deal with the negative aspect of this you know too much information coming to sure uh, and c- consumers not being able to make the choice on what is real what is false what is a lie what is the truth I don't I think I think you've hit upon a, a very very important issue that uh, that uh, that uh, social media is leading to while you can have uh, synergistic and and you can uh, you can have conversations that really build up to an end goal that is uh, that is virtuous uh, I think part of the issue today is that a uh, the consumer is being blitzed with numerous sources of information and and i think i think it is becoming a blur in terms of retention in terms of uh, authenticity in terms of scope in terms of dimension different aspects is clearly becoming an issue and sometimes i think i think there is also a a trait uh, for perpetuation of certain semi truths i dare say falsehoods uh, on either brands or on aspects of 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 uh, consumer life which really then snowballs into issues that become extremely uh, volatile and also vulnerable as far as as far as uh, brands organizations and properties are concerned now obviously this happens only through a process of proactive engagement some of what we are trying to do as an organization in terms of our digital acceleration or in terms of consumer engagement or in terms of the entire uh, shift that the organization is taking from pure traditional media more into 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 uh, digitally enabled uh, marketing initiatives uh, is part of the of the movement to try and uh, and have a more coherent intelligent and fact based dialogue rather than a dialogue where we get into the murky waters of half truths which can really uh, be quite disruptive Uh, to the to the brand and to the uh, to the engagement that consumers have with it. Uh, you know, a small digression. This realignment of your whole company into uh, facing the new realities. Yes. How much are you involved in realigning people, and what is that process? What, what, what uh, your involvement directly? Anand, it's really. I think it's 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 a very good question. And and for me, it is really at at uh, three levels. 
at the first level is the level of the leadership. I as a leader in the organization have to walk the talk, which means that for me, what the consumer thinks, what the consumer does, how the consumer acts, and how the consumer either chooses me or does not choose me on the consumer attitude towards Nestle, the organization and my brands is extremely important. That's number one. So it's no longer uh, a question of saying that, look, this is, this is a, a good thing to have. This is the thing to have. So that's, that's number one. So getting alignment with, with the entire leadership in the organization towards this mode of thinking. Secondly, obviously organizations are a bundle of experiences. Of, of, of expertise and also of perceptions. And I think building this across the organization in terms of, in terms of different capabilities and, and structures and functions. For example, how does a guy sitting in finance or, or sitting in supply chain be sensitive to and be responsive to a consumer either having a good experience or a not so good experience on the brand. Right. I think that is the, is the second element that, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, is something that is part of my exercise to try and re-energize the organization towards that, uh, that direction. And the third one is how do you ensure in an organization that such changes that are being made are of a nature that are permanent, lasting and sustainable and it doesn't become the flavor of the month. Sure. Uh, and then you find that a couple of months down the line, you are in a totally different world. Right. And getting back to the issue at hand, uh, I mean, talking about the challenges in communication, you've reacted uh, positively in the media with your sort of fan films, if I can call them that. How? Sure. So, what do you think that does for the brand? Sure. Uh, Anand, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. Actually, the, the genesis of those uh, films was the consumer themselves. You know, I never realized it. Even though I've been, uh, I've been, uh, I've been in the in the fast-moving consumer good uh, business for over uh, three decades, I never realized what a brand, how close a brand comes to the life of an individual, and what was really overwhelming from the response on social media was the fact that for many, many, many consumers, Maggie was like a part of the family. I mean, it was almost like a favorite relative in the family not being around for a couple of weeks. And you starting to miss him, and what we really or her, tried to, or her right? And I think I think what we really tried to do was to was to uh, extend our own gratitude to the consumer, and we said just in as much as the consumer is missing Maggie, uh, hand on heart, as a company, we miss you too. And I think I think these films therefore did not have any any celebrity endorsements, it didn't talk about fancy technologies, it didn't talk about, about what we were as a company, but just saying, hey, you know, nice, nice to see you again, right? right? And but thank you for being there. The final question, so what is uh, Maggie game plan? How does it come back? What do we see six months from now? Okay, the, the Maggie uh, game plan is, 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 is very clearly resting now on the next stage that has been defined to us by the Honorable High Court. Uh, which is uh, the stage of taking the samples and uh, they have uh, prescribed five samples of the six variants, so 30 samples to be sent to three accredited laboratories, one in Punjab, one in Jaipur and one in, in Hyderabad, uh, all, all going well and all being clear on the, on the products. We go into the stage of manufacturing. Once we manufacture, there is another round of testing that will be done. Similar, five into six uh, variant samples or whatever number of, of variants that we make, those are sent into the laboratories, the three laboratories, the testing completed and we should be and I will be delighted that by the end of this year to present Maggie back to whom it legitimately belongs, our beloved consumer. Wonderful. So hopefully in December, January, you're back on Storyboard and we talk about the new campaign to we launch Maggie. I look forward to it. Thank, Thank you so much. I look forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It is indeed a long journey for Nestle to endure. Let's slip into a short break. When we come back, we find out why Paperboard feels the need for a new campaign.